Today we are excited to delve into the world of Irish Angel, a film that has captured the hearts of audience with its compelling story and rich cultural backdrop. Joining us for this interview is Tom Rogers, SPUC's Creative, Cultural and Youth Manager and one of the key figures behind Irish Angel. Tom has been instrumental in bringing this project to life along with the invaluable support of talented director Danny Patrick and the support of the Society for Protection of Unborn Children. So get ready to go behind the scenes of Irish Angel as we explore the making of this impactful film and the inspirations that drove it forward. Hi Tom, it's great to have you here in studio. Thanks for joining me. For those who haven't seen the movie yet, could you give us an overview of what Irish Angel is all about? Okay, well it's actually uh, based on a true story, the experience of uh, the writer-director of the police, uh, Danny Patrick, something that occurred in his extended family. So uh, the film's based around Anya, who's a 15-year-old schoolgirl. She's from the wrong side of the tracks, as it were, <laughs> growing up in uh, Portrush, Northern Ireland. And, you know, she makes a few uh, mistakes in life as we meet her at a point where she's just had a bit of a sort of summer fling with the, the school heartthrob. And uh, she's found herself pregnant in very difficult circumstances. She's been brought up by her mother, who's just down to her last cleaning job, uh, living with her grandmother who's dying of cancer. So the circumstances seem really difficult and as more and more people get to know about it she finds herself just confronted with a whole range of you know different voices and opinions about um, what she should do and so she confides in her uh, best school friend uh, called leo who's this uh, aspiring actor but also from the uh, the wrong side of the track so he gets involved with his brother's local gang and his life gets into all kind of difficulties and through that experience and also an encounter with her uh, this old parish priest who's played by the uh, veteran actor Julian Glover she has a kind of uh, I suppose a bit of a spiritual awakening really where she uh, starts to see the light at the end of the tunnel and, and things in a more positive light and uh, a way through the difficulty mm -hmm. that she's in. So I don't want to give the, yeah, the ending like, away, but uh, uh, and you know, from the way I've described it, it all sounds uh, a bit heavy, but yeah, it's, it's not actually, on. it is actually a comedy mm -hmm. drama. So uh, above all, it's a very uplifting mm -hmm. movie, I think. And uh, it's very entertaining, you know, it's, well. it's, it's very funny. And uh, yeah, it's a real feel good movie, but one, that's also a bit gritty and down to earth and, and one perhaps with a, an important message. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. Now, how did you come to be part of uh, the process, like an Irish Angel? What role does SPC play in the film's production? Yeah. Okay, well, it was back in 2018, actually, that uh, Danny Patrick, so he's like a up and coming independent film director, he, he came to us. Uh, with a pitch, with an idea to uh, make a movie. Uh, he'd been, he comes from a Irish background and he'd been quite badly affected really by the experience of the, the Irish referendum which took place in 2018 and uh, on abortion. And uh, that was when you know abortion became a constitutional right in the country and uh, yeah, he, he was just uh, very moved by that experience and he wanted to respond in the only way he knew how, which was how to make a movie. So I guess he was coming to SPUC for, for support and then back in the movie. And so we went to meet him and also another of the producers, Alison Fenton, as myself and John Deegan and uh, another colleague. And uh, yeah, we, we talked about the idea for the movie, because that's where every movie starts, yeah. with, with an idea. And um, we were quite excited by the idea, because it, it's something we did want to get involved with in SPUC, because we realised that we couldn't really win the political fight until we've won the cultural Culture. battle. And uh, we saw this as an opportunity to 
influence positively, maybe in a small way, but in a, in a very real way, um, you know, the, the culture. And that's ultimately what we've got to do is transform the culture. I don't know, one movie isn't going to change the world necessarily. Mm -hmm. But um, we see it as a start, yeah, and hopefully the start the of a, a process, well. yeah. And where was Irish Angel primarily shot, and why were, were these locations, locations chosen? Well, it was um, mainly shot in uh, where it's based, where the story is based, which was Port Rush. Um, County Antrim, yeah, Northern beautiful. Ireland. <laughs> so, I'd love to uh, I think I believe that's where uh, Danny Patrick is from. So it's a place he knows, you know, really well. It's a bit like Woody Allen with New York. He's a bit like that with uh, with Northern Ireland. And um, it was great actually because the whole community uh, got involved. You know, for instance, uh, a lot of the film is shot in the school so it was a local secondary school there and uh, all the kids came in in their summer holiday to be extras and we gave the the head teacher a cameo role as well, as well. so amazing uh, <laughs> everybody was so on board everybody was on board which was yeah. great and we had the first screen of the movie in port rush and a lot of the community Kinsey had came. been involved uh came to see it um we were actually going to film some of the movie in Malta originally. Uh, in the movie, there's a series of dream sequences where there's a sort of Jesus type figure. He's actually a guardian angel rather than Jesus, but because it, it's uh, Anya's dream, um, it's uh, a little bit confused. And, uh, you know, Malta is actually a good place to go and film. It's where they film a lot of the places where they want it to look like the Middle East and the Holy Land, Israel. So we, we were going to spend two weeks there. But then it was filmed summer of 2021, which was COVID time. So there was all kinds yeah. of travel restrictions and everything there. So it ended up being, you know, entirely shot uh, in, the, in the UK, in uh, Northern Ireland. And some of the inside scenes were filmed in Rygate, at uh, a theatre in Rygate, so. Well, I think uh, Port Rush is very scenic, it's a very beautiful Absolutely, place. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. A we made a lot of the, um, <coughs> the coastline. Yeah, uh, it looks beautiful. So, yeah. And so ha is there a particular moment uh, or experience from working on The Irish Angel that stands out to you uh, as especially <coughs> memorable? Um, th there's so many. I mean, when you, you go through making a movie, I think it's just all those little landmarks which make you realise, you know, this is actually happening and yeah. this is a, you know, a real movie being made. I mean, you know, <coughs> for instance, when we we did the casting for it and we were looking at the audition reels that the agencies had sent us and we were looking for actors for the main roles and uh, when we saw for the first time the actors that we just knew would fit it's, it's an amazing feeling because you've got these sort of conception of characters in your mind and it's just an idea but then when you hit on and find uh, the the actual actors who are going to uh, best bring those characters to to life. It's an amazing feeling. I remember um, just seeing the audition reel of Neve James, who plays Anya there, and just before she even said anything, opened her mouth. She was just kind of fiddling with her phone, and but it was just such what a teenager would do. We just thought, you know, that's our Anya. And uh, yeah, just, uh, you know, there was a number of those kind of uh, moments where you think this has come together like, you know, the first time you see, uh, you know, the first scenes that have been shot and everybody's in costume or, you know, the first rough cuts, but and especially the first pre-release cut of the movie where it actually looks like a real movie. Yeah, it's a good buzz. Then it's, it's a great feeling, yeah. <laughs> Indeed. Now, you mentioned Danny Patrick earlier. How was your experience working with Danny Patrick on this project and why, what did he bring to the film as a director? Yeah, well, he's amazing to, to work mm -hmm. with. You know, he's a real, he's a real character. Uh, he's, you know, very funny. He's very, uh, very amiable guy. And, but he's, he's very uh, creative as well. And he's a great writer. And especially, he's very good at comedy dialogue. I think that's one of the, 
the great strengths of what he does and that's something he really brings to um, Irish Angel as well and I think he brought a real kind of streetwise element yes. to it as well he's his films there um, you know you see a bit of the Guy Ritchie in them there's always uh, small time gangsters and and things like that in but <laughs> that just uh, brought a uh, a, a sort of more popular dimension I think to the uh, to the movie and uh, also provided a bit of the sort of gritty down-to-earth background that really made the positive yeah. message the positive things of the movie uh, came out so uh, yeah he was he was great and he's his own man but he's was also open to the collaborative process and um, I worked a lot with him on developing the, um, the, the script and the screenplay for the movie and he was very open to suggestions and, and feedback and uh, you know really appreciated that and I think that collaborative element between you know us in SPUC and Danny Patrick as, a, as an artist and a director uh, I think it's really produced something special. Mm, fantastic. Now, what were some of the key influences or inspirations behind the story and themes of Irish Angel? Well, um, as, I, as I mentioned, so it's based on a true story. So something that uh, happened in uh, Danny's extended family. And um, I think it's essentially a kind of teen movie as well. It's a sort of got a rites of passage uh, element. Uh, to it there, so I mean, myself and Danny, we're, we're both of the same generation and I think uh, we brought some of the teen movies of the 1980s like uh, Pretty in Pink and The Breakfast Club. Um, it's that, that idea of the, the, the misfit, the school misfit who doesn't quite fit in. I think that's what we've got there with Anya and uh, Leo. Um, Ultimately, we wanted to show, I think, and this is probably the main message of the film, that just in really difficult, hard circumstances, something positive can come out of it. You can make a positive choice, you can take a leap of faith, and that can work out. So, if anything, I guess that's the main kind of message of the, of the movie. And that's very uh, encouraging message as well to have and to portray. For those now outside the film industry, what do you think would be the most surprising part of the filmmaking process for Irish Angel? For those outside, they're probably, well, a lot of people are astounded <laughs> by uh, how long it, it takes. So the, the whole process of, coming up with the idea for the movie and getting it out there uh, took about six years. So, uh, I mean, to me, it, uh, I suppose it affirmed a lot of the suspicions I had about the, <laughs> the movie industry in that I knew there were going to be challenges. Oh yeah, and, and there uh, was. <laughs> there's something at every stage that can go catastrophically yeah. wrong, wrong, and it often does. And Tell that's then the, the role of the producers then yeah. to uh, find a way of working around that. Uh, find a way of overcoming it, looking for alternatives. So, you know, we had all kinds of things uh, happen uh, during the, the making of the movie and afterwards. I mean, there were times when we had funding uh, pulled from us. Uh, we, you know, lost the sales agent that we were with. There, all those kind of um, things with actually getting the project out there. But also, so many things happened during the production as well. Like just with Northern Ireland, the weather. And especially, that's one thing about making a relatively low budget film, yeah. because you've only got the budget. If you've got a big budget and it rains one day, you just hold off till tomorrow. Um, with Irish Angel, we couldn't do that. So for instance, uh, we had one of the final scenes was going to be Anya traveling across in the, the ferry to uh, Liverpool from Belfast and we'd done everything, we booked the ferry and, uh, and all that, had it all set up and we had just torrential rain on the day so we just couldn't do it so we had to completely uh, rejig the script uh, in order to, to do something different and you have 
a lot of those things happening making a movie but there's often the hand of providence there as well because sometimes you have to go around another course and it actually works out better so uh, we, we kind of found that a lot with uh, Irish Angel. That's amazing. Then what is, this is my final question for you, what is the key message that you want viewers to take away from watching Irish Angel? I think really we, it, it isn't the sort of movie where we want to um, hit people over the head with a, a sledgehammer with a very heavy message. It, 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 it's not the kind of movie that I think will get anybody's backs up. It's, you, could, you could take anybody along to this movie, whatever their views. But it just shows that even in the most difficult circumstances, uh, there is always the choice to choose life, and that's always a, a positive choice. It can seem like a, a scary choice, but if you've got the right support and um, people who say the right positive things to you. So there's several characters in the movie in particular, like the, the grandmother character and the priest, who just really, I think, suggest to Anya that there is um, a positive way forward, uh, there is hope, and in the end, that kind of, that hope, you know, that light uh, carries the day. So, as I said, you know, it's an uplifting movie, ultimately. Indeed, I really enjoyed watching it. And I enjoyed chatting to you, Tom, and thanks again for coming in to the studio. It's been a pleasure. And for travelling up today, I appreciate that. Thank no you so problem. much. Thank you. Thank you everyone for joining us today on Uplift. Please tune in again soon, where we will have more influential guests.